हेलो गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन एंड वेलकम यू ऑल टू द आई एन बेस्ड ऑर्थोडॉन्टिक क्वेश्चंस व्हिच वी डिस्कस टुडे इवनिंग so we'll be starting with the i know first question what should be the ratio of the anatomical and the artistic portion of the plaster cast see the it's a very direct question from the book but options thode se confusing hai agar aapko nahi yaad hai to first jo hai agar yaad hai to directly aap kar denge 3 is to 1 but अगर थोड़ा सा कंफ्यूज करना है तो उन्होंने वन इज टू थ्री का भी ऑप्शन दिया हुआ है टू सिंप्लीफाई इट अगर याद रखना है तो एनाटमिकल पोर्शन हमेशा ज़्यादा होगा एज कम्पेयर टू द आर्टिस्टिक पोर्शन ऑफ एनी कास्ट और एनाटमिक पोर्शन किसे कहेंगे वुड बी द डेंटल द डेंटल टिश्यू बेसिकली नॉट एंड द आर्टिस्टिक पोर्शन वुड बी द सराउंडिंग बेस सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए थ्री रेज टू वन so what is the study model consists of an atmic and an artistic part and an atmic region with with the actual impression of the dental tissue an arch and its surrounding structures an artistic region will consist of a symmetrical plaster base that supports the anatomic portion and helps in analyzing the occlusion orientation of the study model ab hum kar rahe hain to i will try ki thoda isse related questions bhi aur aur topic discuss ho jaye सो so बेसिकली इस पर अगर और क्वेश्चन बन सकते हैं या पहले जो आए हैं नॉट इन आई एन आई सी ई टी अदर एग्जाम्स लाइक नीट एज वेल सो द टोटल डायमेंशन ऑफ द मैगजरियन मैंडेबल कास्ट वुड बी सेवेंटी एम एम ये क्वेश्चन पहले बहुत बार आया हुआ है इसके अलावा जो क्वेश्चन बन सकते हैं दैट द लेंथ ऑफ द मैगजरी बेस शुड बी सिक्सटी एम एम एंड दैट ऑफ द मैंडल बेस शुड बी फिफ्टी फाइव एम एम अगर रेशो वाइज डिवाइड करना हो मैगजरियन मैंडेबुलर कास्ट को so the one third ratio should be of the base region and two third should be of the anatomic region next question so according to cats the image shows what type of malocclusion ye question thoda sa mushkil hai agar aapko cats premolar classification aap logo ko nahi pata hai so what is the cats premolar malocclusion hum thoda sa isko dekhenge अगर आप इस इमेज के हिसाब से जाएंगे तो इसमें देखेंगे तो कहीं पर मोलर एंड ऑन दिख रहा है तो उसके बेस पे कोई एंड टू एज मालोक्लूजन भी करेगा बट द एग्जामिनर ने ये दो लाइंस मार्क करके क्लियरली दी है जो हमको हेल्प करती है कि इस क्वेश्चन को आंसर करने में सो व्हाट इज़ द क्लैट प्रीमोलर क्लासीफिकेशन सो क्लास वन प्रीमोलर क्लासीफिकेशन के अकॉर्डिंग सिंपल अगर देखा जाए तो फर्स्ट मैक्सलरी प्रीमोलर should fall into the groove between the lower two premolars is image mein dikh raha hai class 2 mein kya hoga class 2 mein ye jo groove se first maxillary premolar ka cusp tip should be ahead of the groove between the two lower two premolars and class 3 mein it will be behind अब इस क्लासिफिकेशन का एक और एडवांटेज था कि ये क्वांटिटेटिव क्लासिफिकेशन था जैसे एंगल्स क्लासिफिकेशन वाज अ क्वालिटेटिव ओनली जो कि क्लास वन क्लास टू क्लास थ्री बताता है क्वांटिटेटिव बीइंग कि ये मेजरमेंट भी आपको बताएगा कि कितना एमएम आगे कितना एमएम सो so, दूसरा क्वेश्चन इससे क्या बन सकता है कि इट्स अ ऑल्सो क्वान्टिटेटिव क्लासीफिकेशन तो इस कमिंग बैक टू द ओरिजिनल क्वेश्चन जो आई में आया है that is this question in which you can see that this line is ahead of the two premolars that is through through passing through the groove if this line is ahead of this uh, line passing through the groove it will be a class 2 malocclusion agar if this line would have been coinciding it would have been a class 1 malocclusion if this maxillary cusp tip would have been behind this groove it would have been a class 3 malocclusion so the correct answer is class answer option b class 2 malocclusion 
अदर क्वेश्चन विच माइट कम बट इट्स रियली कम्स नाउ कि वॉट इज इन विच इयर दिस माल अक्लूजन वॉज गिवन इट वॉज इन दर नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू इट वॉज अ प्रीवियस कॉन्सेप्ट बट जस्ट टू कम्प्लीट द सब्जेक्ट आई हैव रिटन दैट इट वॉज गिवन इन दर नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू एंड द फुल नेम इज नॉट इन कैंट्स अनदर पॉइंट इज इफ द मेजरमेंट इज गिवन इन प्लस साइन then it will also be a class two mal occlusion if it's in minus sign like that means the line is behind the it then it will be in the class 3 equivalent classification next question is a image based question again the identify the type of instrument if you are aware of it then it's a simple option will be the distill and cutter if you don't so usme kuch identifying features hai sabse bada this groove which is seen this groove is a safety valve mechanism which inhibits the wire impinge when we cut the distal end of the wire it inhibits it into impinging the gingiva so the direct answer would be a distal end cut another question which can be made is how what maximum dimension wire it can cut so it can cut up to 0.022 cross 0.028 inch length. and it's used exclusively for cutting the dis protruding distal end of the wire rest all options are the bayonet forceps which is a extraction forceps clear cut you can understand artery holding forceps is like a scissor shaped and bracket holding forceps will is like a tweezer i'll show you the image of the bracket holding forceps there is another question in which this bracket holding forceps i'll show you the image so the correct option is this cylinder cut next question is the what is the amount of tooth movement in initial phase of the orthodontic tooth movement so basically orthodontic tooth movement is divided into three phase that is the initial lag and the post lag phase phases the maximum tooth movement which occurs is during the post lag phase but here the question is asked of the initial tooth tooth movement that the correct answer is 0.2 to 0.25 mm now as i said ki we won't stop here so what other questions can be made out of this so the correct option is answer option a now first what uh, the initial phase la lies from day 1 to day 3 and the tooth movement is approximately 0.2 to 0.25 mm the lag phase occurs from day 4 to 5 in which little or no tooth movement occurs and the post lag phase day 6 onwards in which gradual to sudden increase in tooth movement occurs so what other questions can be made they can ask you about the time what what how much duration does the initial phase lag or how much duration the lag phase lag happens second they can give you this graph also this graph is directly from taken from the standard textbook of profit 6th edition so they can remove this day times and days or they can write it they remain there and label this as a b c and d and you ask you what does the a to b phase indicate what does b to c indicate and what does d c to d indicate so the all the things this same topic many questions can be asked both in ini as well as neat pg exams as well rest they can also ask you about the time and days which i have mentioned and the duration another question if they want to modify it is what in which phase the most rapid tooth movement occurs so the most rapid tooth movement occurs in occurs in the initial phase and what in which phase the, there is no tooth movement another question then it will be the lag phase and the most longest amount of tooth movement occurs in the post lag phase so longest most rapid and low tooth movement in words ka thoda sa dhyan rakhna hai so question which originally came into the exam was what is the amount of tooth movement which occurs in the initial phase of the orthodontic tooth movement the correct answer is 0.2 to 0.25 mm ye thoda sa tricky question hai agar hum in sare options ko dekh ke soche to which is of the following inhibits bone resorption interleukin 1 interleukin 6 parathyroid hormone osteoprotegrin or opg if you remember agar periost uh, ki classes so clear cut answer aapko mil jayega that is the osteoprotegrin rest all inhibits promotes bone resorption osteoprotegrin competitively binds with compete with rankel to bind with rank ligand to inhibit bone resorption ab is se related what other questions can be found is first a question which already has come in the exam in 2018 was the activity index what they asked was what is the 
what is the ratio of the uh, so activity index is basically a ratio between il1 beta is to il1 ra this was was also a previous question which came in the aims exam back in 2018 what other thing they can ask out of activity index is more the activity index more rapid will be the tooth movement because it will cause more bone resorption second also uh, one more interleukin which down regulates rankle means inhibits bone resorption will be interleukin 10 so agar if you are not able to understand the concept just remember osteoprotegrin and interleukin 10 iske beyond they cannot ask anything on this bone marker anything else any other biomarker they ask all promotes bone resorption clear okay moving on to the next question normal lips not able to meet due to proclined maxillary anteriors present in class 2 div 1 patients are called as competent lips incompetent lips potentially competent lips potentially incompetent lips agar hum charo options ko dekhe aur elimination rule se chale first of all question ko samajhna important hai ki isne first important ek point likha hai normal lips sorry जो इस क्वेश्चन का सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट है नॉर्मल लिप्स हैड दिस नॉर्मल लिप्स वर्ड नॉट बीन रिटर्न तो इसके आंसर दो लोग करेक्ट हो सकते थे बट दे हैव रिटर्न द वर्ड नॉर्मल लिप्स सो क्लियर कट आंसर हो जाता है दिज आर पोटेंशियली कॉम्पिटेंट लिप्स विच आर नॉट एबल टू मी ड्यू टू प्रोक्लाइन मैक्सरी एंटीरियर्स पोटेंशियली इनकॉम्पिटेंट लिप्स करके कोई वर्ड होता ही नहीं है सो so, इसको तो एलिमिनेट कर दीजिए एक कोई बुक में लिखा हुआ है एज ए पोटेंशियली इनकॉम्पिटेंट लिप्स दीज आर नो सच वर्ड एग्जिस्ट इन द ऑर्थोनॉटिक लिटरेचर एज पोटेंशियली इनकॉम्पिटेंट लिप्स बचे तीन ऑप्शंस कॉम्पिटेंट लिप्स हो नहीं सकता बिकॉज दीज आर नॉट एबल टू मीट इनकॉम्पिटेंट लिप्स एंड पोटेंशियली कॉम्पिटेंट लिप्स बट दे आर मैंशन द वर्ड नॉर्मल लिप्स सो आंसर क्लियर कट कम्स एज पोटेंशियली कॉम्पिटेंट लिप्स so these are lips are normal lips but apart at rest usually due to the physical obstruction such as lower lip resting behind the proclined upper anteriors in class 2 developed cases coming to the next question for the purpose of superimposition broadbent gave a triangle in 1931 which of the following points is used for broadbent's triangle ye theoretical question hai if ho sakta hai aap logo ko na pata ho so i'll explain again about it फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल जो पर्ली लाइन में लिखा है वॉट इज द फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ सुपर इम्पोजिशन सुपर इम्पोजिशन आर बेसिकली यूज टू एसेस द ग्रोथ स्टेटस ऑफ एन इंडिविजुअल जो भी ग्रोथ की हम स्टडीज हुई है जो भी ग्रोथ का आपने टॉपिक औरतों में कवर किया होगा बेस्ड ऑन सुपर इम्पोजिशन वॉट एपन्स इज सीरियल सेफोलामोग्राम्स और एक्सरेज आर टेकन ऑफ द सेम पेशेंट ओवर डिफरेंट एरियाज ऑफ एज एंड दे आर सुपर इम्पोज सुपर इम्पोजिशन इज डन ऑफ बेस्ड सम स्टेबल लैंड मार्क्स विच डू नॉट ग्रो so when they are superimposed there we are able to assess the growth status of different bones of the uh, human skull and based on it the growth studies was done so broadbent gave his own superimposition technique many authors gave rickett superimposition technique broadbent superimposition technique steiner's also gave one so here the question was about a broadbent technique so which of the following track is used for broadbent triangle so first will i'll also tell you about what are other points were used in the broadbent triangle so he what he took was he you uh, he drew a plane from bolton point to the nasian point that is the whole length of the anterior cranial base to whole length of the cranial base the length of the anterior cranial base comes from cella to nasion and from posterior cranial base comes from bolton point to the cella so what he did was he took the length of the whole cranial base from bolton point to the nasion so clear cut exam option comes as the bolton point gonion lies on the mandible basion lies at the most lower most point of the skull and opisthion lies on the is a soft tissue point and the uh, junction between the hairline and the glabella so opisthion is a soft tissue point so let option jo reh jata hai bolton point hi reh jata hai even if you don't know the अगर थ्योरी कंप्लीट करनी हो इस टॉपिक की सो बोल्टन पॉइंट इज द डीपेस्ट एंड पॉइंट बिहाइंड द कर्वेचर ऑफ द मैंडेबल एंड बोल्टन पॉइंट से नेजियन तक ही ड्रू अ प्लेन एंड ही ड्रू अ परपेंडिकुलर फ्रॉम द सेला 
onto the this plane that point is he called it as a point r so another question which can come is in which classification or who gave used point r to for his uh, sophelometric analysis so the answer would be broadband so option c broadband's point so what is a broadband triangle it's a cellar nasion bolton point and its registration point r were used he did his studies from 3 to 18 years of age ke bachcho pe maine study ki thi and we that's all matlab baki rest all points are not important from the competitive exam point of view next question is for how much time vestibular screen should be worn by a patient this is a direct question mcq hai iska answer during night time and 2 to 3 hours in a day even if you don't know the answer you can very well tell that it's during night time because during day time no one can wear a vestibular screen and do the daily activities so the option is during night time and 2 to 3 hours daily another question which can come out of is the what is the hot smoke modification of a vestibular screen it's just nothing just a wire base is made and a loop is formed like this on the vestibular screen with and it's embedded with the help of cold cure acrylate it's used for to correct the lips uh, short lip and lip competency what the child does it when he wears the vestibular uh, screen he tries to suck on this loop made of wire 21 gauge wire so it help also helps in improving the lip competency of the patient this modification was given by hortz modification so it went come as a image page question as well another thing there are holes put which are uh, reduced with time to clear check out the mouth breathing habit of the patient now what is the best time to use a frankel appliance this question answer uh, jo iska hai given in the ex competitive books was late mix dentition which is not correct actually had they used question be what is the best time to use a functional appliance then the answer should would have been late mix dentition frankel appliance is never used in the late mix dentition it's always used in the early mix dentition the reason being simple logic hai ki it's a bulky appliance which cannot be worn at the stage of late uh, complete 24 hours a day the patient can like the vestibular screen the patient cannot wear the frankel appliance 24 hours a day so the earlier you start the more effect can you can get second of all the frankel philosophy is not similar to the one on which the other appliances work it based on the muscular philosophy that it eliminates the action of the muscle on the developing dentition by the time the patient reaches the late mix dentition the dentition is mostly developed and the action of the muscles are dead so frankel appliance cannot and cannot work on the late mix dentition the answer was wrong which is given in some competitive exam book the correct answer is early mix dentition if the question is correct had the question been what is the best time to use a functional appliance the answer would have been late mixed dentition so i have cleared the confusion here the, if the question is different the answer would be this if the question specifically ask about frankel appliance it will be early mixed dentition so this was the line that during the late mixed dentition and then transition uh, transitional dentition period i have marked it in red this is an incorrect statement that best effect of frankel appliance is achieved during the late mix I don't know where they have picked up this line. I've directly taken them to tell you that this line is not correct. So according to the theorem of retention elapsed, theorem seven refers to. It's a direct theoretical question. Agar if you guys remember the answer, then option correct C option is C. Corrections carried out during the growth of period of growth are less likely to elapse. There are nine theorems in total. Tenth one was added by Moyers. So another MCQ which when come is who added the tenth theorem? The reader only gave nine theorems. The tenth was added by Moyers. So these are the theorems. It's all given in the books. You can read and memorize. There's nothing to explain this. Now another question: the Frankel appliance. Which of the following statements is true about Frankel type five appliance? Now. In the recent uh, INICET pattern, these types of questions are coming in which multiple options are correct or match the following in assertion reasoning type. So this is an example of one of such type of question in much multiple answer are correct. So which of the statements are correct? 
so headgear is incorporated using class 2 div1 patients with procline maxillary anteriors using class 2 div2 malocclusion using class 3 malocclusion using patient with high mandible plane angle and vertical maxillary axis so what are frank different types of frankel appliance let's discuss that them first there these are the five types of frankel appliance 1 2 3 4 and 5 easy ayat karna fr3 is for class 3 fr2 is for class 2 and fr1 is for class 1 and class 2 div division 1 malocclusion fr1 also has three types 1a 1b and 1c so what is 1a used for class 1 malocclusion where there is minor to moderate crowding and also for deep bite cases class fr1b is where overjet does not exceed 5 mm and 1c is where overjet is more than 7 mm fr4 is used for treatment of open bite and bag maxillary protrusion cases and FR5 envisages the functional regulators that incorporate headgears and they are indicated in long face patients having a high mandible plane angle and vertical maxillary excess. So here coming back to the question FR type 5 is headgear is incorporated. So correct FR type 5 using class 2 div1 with procline maxillary incisors incorrect that is frankel type 1 using class 2 div2 incorrect that is frankel type 2 using class 3 incorrect that is frankel type 3 using patients as high mandible plane angle and vertical myonic cell that is correct so 1 and 5 the correct option will be c headgear is incorporated and used in patients with high mandible plane angle and vertical maxillary excess another question which can come is frankel never gave this fifth one he just gave this one two three four up they might or might not ask that how many types were given by Frankel? So originally Frankel just gave one, two, three, four. Fifth one was later and added. It was not given by Frankel. Coming to the next question, it's also a theoretical question. Why are used for fitted label bow? The correct answer is option A, 21 gauge wire. Had they not used the word again, a modified question which can come is have they used what the wire used for an active label bow? The correct option would have been 23 gauge. Had they used the word what wire used for a passive label bow, the correct answer would again be have been 21 gauge. So just clearly check the word wire is used for fitted, active, or passive. These three words can also be used, and a question can also come like that. So here the question which came was wire use of fitted label bow. The correct answer is 21 gauge wire. Now this is a question, either this question is recalled incorrectly or there was some mistake in framing uh, I am not aware but anyhow the, this was the question which is present in the book so I will discuss that according to Fishman's skeletal maturity indicator stage 5 is characterized by now the options which they have given are not of Fishman's skeletal first of all Fishman never gave a skeletal maturity indicator Fishman gave the indicator for hand wrist radiograph the skeletal maturity indicator or the cervical vertebra maturity indicator was given by Bessetti or it was modified by Bessetti, but it was only given by Lampreski. So the options they have given are that of that cervical vertebral maturity indicator. But the question is asked for Fishman skeletal maturity. So I suppose the word Fishman shouldn't have been here. Rest alone, we should cover both of them. So remembering that all the classification of Fishman's hand wrist radiograph is a bit difficult. So I have just for completion, I have mentioned this image. If you can remember this image, it will be easier for you. So these are the cla 11 classification stages or 11 classification in which Fishman gave. And this is the stage of cervical multiple maturation index that is the CMI stages. Now another question which can come is CMI, they can write a CMI stage 1 or they can write CS1, anything they can write, both are same. But remember that this was not given by Fishman, this was given by Bessetti or Lampreski. They can write any name. But Fishman never gave any cervical vertebral maturation index. It was given by Lampreski or Bessetti. So the correct answer would be, agar if they have asked for the stage 5, CMI stage 5, it will be accentuated con concavities of the inferior vertebral borders of C2, C3 and C4. If the uh, option B, deep concavities are present or C2, C3, 4 that will be CMI stage 6. Concavities begin to develop that will be stage 2. Distinct concavity stage 4. 
have written this question can also come as an image based question in which they can provide you an image and try ask you to identify the CMI staging from it so just be careful with that it has come already the image based question I think either in NEET or INI I don't remember but this question has come now they are presented as a theoretical form not as an image based question so just be careful both types can come Fishman index has not been asked because it's too big for a graduate student but still they have written the word Fishman so I put up that now this is an easy question the slot size in 0.022 inch MBT bracket is its correct answer is 0.022 into 0.028 inch they can also ask what is the maximum dimension wire that a 0.22 inch bracket which can accommodate it. the answer would be same so the option is 0.22 now as I mentioned when I was discussing cat's premolar classification which of the following is not a qualitative classification of malocclusion the options are angles classification IOTN Simon's classification British in standard classification of incisor relationship now what is a qualitative and what is a quantitative a qualitative means it does not which does not give any numerical value it will just tell about the severity of the malocclusion tell you class 1 class 2 class 3 like in angles Simon's classification that is the canine classification and British standard incisor classification which given also gives us the value is class 1 class 2 class 3 it won't give any value that it was present in cat's premolar classification so directly even if you don't know what is IOTN you can eliminate all A, C and D option and you can get the option as IOT but still we are discussing so we'll discuss I'll uh, provide you a table in which we have classified various uh, indexes into qualitative and quantitative all the indices which are there the big it IOTN power index these are all quantitative they will give you a numerical value Whereas all the classification like the angles, modification, Dewey's modification, incisor classification, Simon's classification are a qualitative value. They won't give you any numerical data. They will just tell you that whether it's a class 1, class 2, class 3. This is the difference between the qualitative and the quantitative. Cats will also come in the quantitative classification. Confuse nahi hona hai. Usme class 1, class 2, class 3 hai. But still it gives a numerical value as well. So it's a quantitative classification, CATS premolar classification. It might come in a future exam with that whether it's CATS premolar is a quantitative or not. So it's a quantitative classification. Next question, force orthodontic resorption is useful in all of the following situations except. This question has come many times in previous AIMS exam as well. They have written here the full form. They have previously they have written as FOE just to confuse it. The full form remains the same. That's force orthodontic reduction. If you read the options or even if you don't know of the subject, that is what is force orthodontic eruption, we'll try to answer the question based on rule of elimination. Eruption of submerged deciduous teeth. When crown lending is required, of course, we have studied in period that crown lending requires extrusion of the tooth. Gingival margin is placed coronal to the CEG. <coughs> Just a minute. Gingival margin is placed coronal to the CEG. Again, extrusion is required to place the gingival margin at the cementonamel junction and bone and soft tissue augmentation at the implant site. Again, Forced orthodontic tooth movement is required for bone formation at the implant site. So even if we don't know by common sense of what by just reading the terms we can say that the correct answer is all except emerge eruption of submerged deciduous teeth. Deciduous teeth are never erupted using any orthodontic means. If they are submerged let it remain there the permanent teeth will erupt. So the correct option is eruption of submerged deciduous teeth. Again, he had the word would mean eruption of an impacted some deciduous teeth. The answer would have been same. It's force orthodontic eruption is not used for eruption of any impacted deciduous teeth as well. Just to confuse, they might give submerged, impacted, anyone thing. Ankylosed below the gingival margin, deciduous teeth are not erupted using any kind of orthodontic means. So just to complete uh, among the advantages of the technique 
leveling on isolated infrabone defects, lengthening of the clinical prong, that was the option B, repositioning of the gingival margin, option C, improvement of the primary anchorage site for a dental implant, increase the amount of attached gingiva and bone at implants, and that was option D. So it improves the bone and gingival augmentation and, imp and improves the recipient implant site for more aesthetic restoration. So these are all other things which can be used for which forced orthodontic eruption can be used. So coming to the next question, it's an easy question. Why axis is related to the FH plane in the notes? It, uh, the options are relation of mandible to the Frankfurt horizontal plane. FH is a Frankfurt horizontal plane. Relation of mandible to the anterior cranial base. Relation of maxilla to the anterior cranial base. Estimate of the mandible growth direction. Whether it's type of vertical or horizontal growth pattern. So the correct option will be D. Estimate of the mandible growth direction. So what is Y axis? Y axis are axis drawn from the cella, point cella to nathion. And related to the FH plane. So it helps in estimation of the mandible growth direction. Its normal values will be 51 to 56 degrees average value. They might or might not ask recent patterns, may though I don't think they ask any numerical data. Just to complete the topic, so I'm telling you the normal value, average value is 51 to 56 degree, and the correct answer is estimate of the mandible growth direction, whether it's a horizontal or vertical. Confused on they you might get confused that why not option A relation of mandible to the Frankfurt horizontal plane. See, better option jo hai, wo hai estimate of the mandible growth direction as compared to A. So D is much better option as compared to A. I won't say ki A galat hai, but D is much better option that A. It does not tell any relation to the, it just tells about the growth direction, whether it's in vertical or horizontal direction. So D much better than A. So next question, coming to the next question. K type swallows refer, refers to complex, retained infantile swallow, mature swallow or myotherapeutic swallow. It's a theoretical question. K type swallow, K swallow is a treatment mechanics treatment mechanism for patients having tongue thrust habit so coming to the options complex swallow retained infantile swallow or mature swallow mature swallow is present in all adults option is eliminated complex swallow and retained infantile swallow are all part present in tongue thrusting patients so a or b can also not be the answer because why rule of elimination it's a option comes as myotherapeutic swallow it helps the patient to adapt and eliminate the tongue thrusting habit Another thing which they might ask is what is plastic bite. So what is plastic bite? It's seen in the infants only and hinge movement of the lower jaw which facilitates suckling and swallowing of milk and liquids. So it's just simple closing and opening of the mouth which is seen in the infants. That is also known as plastic bite. In adults there is no plastic bite. There is hinge as well as anterior translocation of the mandible. So please be careful, plastic bite is only seen in infants. This can also come as a question, it was part of the tongue thrusting topic only. So I just thought of mentioning this word plastic bite. And coming to the case follow, it's a myotherapeutic tongue strengthening exercise used in case of tongue thrusting. Helps to improve tone, mobility and function of the tongue and improving the occlusion of the patient. This is the me mechanism how it's done. No need to remember that. Just remember that K-type swallow is used in treatment of tongue thrusting and plastic bite. Coming to the next question, not true about steep mandible plane angle. Not true means being which of the statement is false. Seen in class through class three malocclusion, correct can be seen. Seen in class two malocclusion, correct can be seen. Characteristics of normal growth in mandible, not correct and considered as an unfavorable condition by most orthodontists, also correct. So not true will be the first statement would be the characteristic of normal growth in mandible. Because it's not a norm, uh, normal growth pattern, having a steep mandible plane angle had the question, option will be average or sorry, horizontal ma mandible plane angle or closed mandible plane angle, the answer would also have been C. So they can change the word from steep to closed, steep being vertical growth pattern, 
or close will bring the horizontal growth pattern the option answer remains the same characteristics not true being characteristic of normal growth in. not true means false statement it falls about close mandible plane angle the option will remain same characteristic of normal it's not a characteristic of normal growth the characteristic of normal growth in mandible is average growth pattern it can be seen in class through both steep and uh, both vertical and horizontal can be seen in class 2 and is also considered an unwavable condition both horizontal as well as vertical growth pattern or vertical mandible plane angle both any of these words can come the examiner can change the question by changing these words but the answer remains the same so the um, answer the steep mandible can be seen in class 2 class 3 and is considered by most orthodontists as an unfavorable condition that is what we treat now disadvantage of fixed functional orthopedic appliance uh, again this is a kind of a question which is meant to confuse you or the question has been framed whatever so we'll try to break the question and try to answer it the question present here who had disadvantage first of all the word is disadvantage of fixed functional orthopedic appliance fixed function now the fixed functional orthopedic appliance ke example common most common example being the forces power scope but the most common being forces now you should remember that this let me draw agar hum dekhe ye maxilla hai jaldi hmm short ओके okay. अगर फिक्स फंक्शनल अप्लायंस देखेंगे तो हमेशा मैक्सिलरी फर्स्ट मोलर से इट इज गिवन ऑन टू द एंटीरियर रीजन दैट इज इन द मैक्सिलरी एंड इनसाइजर रीजन इसका मैकेनिज्म जो होता है वो दैट इज अ पुल टाइप मैकेनिज्म दैट इज इट पुल्स द मैंडिबल फॉरवर्ड वेयर इज इफ यू टेक एग्जांपल ऑफ अ क्लास 2 इलास्टिक सिमिलर इफ हैड बीन बीन रिटन अ Class two elastic. It's given from the mandibular first molar to the maxillary anterior region. So, is baat ka dhyan rakhna hai. Ham yaha par fixed functional appliance ki baat kare. It's given from the maxillary molar to the maxillary anterior region, and it works on the mechanism pull type. Sorry, push type. That is, it pushes the mandible forward. So, what happens is. it causes intrusion of the first molar fixed functional appliance again i'm saying it causes intrusion of the first molar you can write it down if you don't know that it causes intrusion of the first molar so clear cut last option is eliminated extrusion of first molar use an angle extrusion occurs in class 2 elastics had there is the question mean disadvantage of class 2 appliance the option would have been extrusion of first molar use an angle next coming to other options anti clockwise rotation of mandible since the mandible moves forward it causes clockwise rotation of the mandible both class 2 elastics and as well as fixed functional appliance reh jate do option clockwise rotation of parietal plane and proclination of incisors fixed functional appliance since it causes intrusion of the molars and distal tipping of the molars as well it causes a relative clockwise rotation of the parietal plane agar aap serial radio agle radiographs pe dekhenge and you superimpose it as i said नेक्स्ट वीडियो फॉर में यू माइट सी देर इज विल बी रिलेटिव इंट्रूजन ऑफ द मैंडेबल सो मैक्सिला सो द पैलेटल प्लेन माइट अपेयर अ लिटिल बिट टिल्टेड और अपेयर रोटेटेड इन द क्लॉकवाइज डायरेक्शन सो दिस आंसर इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट दैट इट कॉजेज क्लॉकवाइज रोटेशन ऑफ द पैलेटल प्लेन नेक्स्ट इज प्रोक्लिनेशन ऑफ इंसाइज सिंस द एक्शन डायरेक्टली एक्ट ऑन द एंटीरियर रीजन इट ऑल्सो कॉजेज प्रोक्लिनेशन ऑफ इंसाइज and this proclination of incisors is also a disadvantage of class 2 elastics as well so not to confuse you much agar yahan question hai disadvantage of fixed functional orthopedic appliance both option b and c are correct but they have asked word is a or word at disadvantage here these are the effects of fixed functional appliance that is clockwise rotation of palatal plane and proclination of implants but disadvantage jo hoga wo hai proclination of incisors Clockwise rotation of parietal plane से कोई disadvantage नहीं होता it's a effect of a fixed functional appliance. Similarly, had the question बी ये question as a multiple answer correct पे भी आ सकता है which is the new pattern of आई एन आई सी टी वट इज द डिसएडवाटेज ऑफ क्लास टू प्लास्टिक्स सो द ऑप्शन सी एंड डी बोथ आर करेक्ट दैट इज प्रोक्लिनेशन ऑफ इंसाइज एंड एक्सक्लूजन ऑफ फर्स्ट मोलर एक्सक्लूजन ऑफ फर्स्ट मोलर में भी बहुत मोर रिफाइंड होती है मैंडिबल ऑफ फर्स्ट मोलर 
because it's given from the first molar to the anterior region. So it also causes proclination of incisors and extrusion. More refined would be proclination of lower incisors in class 2 elastics. So bahut sara confusion ho gaya hai. So just to sum it up, here the question was disadvantage of fixed functional orthopedic uplines. Both B and C are correct option but the word disadvantage is written. So the more correct option would be or the correct answer would be more correct. Sorry to say that the correct option would be proclination of incisor. It causes proclin. Had the question come what are the disadvantage of class 2 elastics both C and D are correct that is it causes proclination of lower incisors and extrusion of mandibular first mold. So it causes proclination of incisors. That is clockwise anti Coming to the next question, incorporating loops in orthodontic wire leads to increase strength by a Q, increase strength proportionately, increase range proportionately, and decrease stiffness by a Q. It's also a theoretical question. Is ka ek modification in corrective loops means increasing length of the wire between the two brackets? Simple. Is ka modification which also can come is in increasing the diameter of the orthodontic wire. So it's simple sa hai option. Mene, I have summarized all of those in a sing single slide. Incorporating loops or increasing the length, same kind of meaning here. Next question may might be possible that they might write increasing length in the orthodontic wire and they can give the options as that. So increasing incorporating loops or increasing the wire option strength decreases proportionately. That is it's inversely related. Another modification that it is inversely related. It's just play of language. Stiffness decreases as a cubic function and the range increases as a square function. If we increase the diameter of the wire, that we increase the thickness of the wire, strength increases as a cubic function, stiffness increases by fourth power, and range decreases by half. Ye as it is profit say question. So just be careful. So here the correct answer is decrease stiffness by length. Just remember that's these other uh, type of questions which can be framed based on a similar concept. Coming to the next question, the appliance given in the growing age of the child has to be trimmed again and again in the plate region for its functionality is. Again, thoda sa confusing question hai, isli I have highlighted certain words of it. Options are active appliance, passive appliance, active passive appliance, functional appliance. If we go by theoretically, both option A and option D are correct. Both, aap growing age mein Holly's plate bhi de sakte ho just to correct the growing Proclination of the incisors, trim it labially, lingually, as we have done in your internship period and graduation period, and that's an active appliance. Functional appliance, of course, are given in the growing age of the child, but no functional appliance is trimmed in the plate region. Trim block also trim is trimmed in the block region. Activator is also trimmed in the tooth region. So no appliance is tra trimmed in the plate region. But since they have mentioned the growing age of the child, so it might be possible the examiner wanted to ask you the answer is functional appliance just because of this word but it's debatable both active appliance and functional appliance are correct so don't get confused the answer is functional appliance but yes i won't deny the fact that active appliance is also correct and also for all functional appliances are active appliances because they are trimmed and they have active they cause active treatment Passive appliances are simple, just for retain purposes. They don't exert any force. Functional appliances exert force. Active appliances do also exert force. So, growing age of the child, and again, sorry to say that, but it might be possible that the recall might be a problem. But nevertheless, this was the question, so I have tried to explain it. Again, a question in which multiple options are correct. Pin block appliance is used in the management of anterior cross bite, posterior open bite, posterior cross bite, deep bite. The answer which is given in the complete exam book is deep bite, but again it can be used in the correction of anterior cross bite is the modification of pin block, class 3 type of pin block. Like in Frankel, we have FR3, there's also subtypes of pin block, type 3 pin block, which is used for correction of anterior cross bite or MO as well. So A is also correct, but I feel, uh, would like to say that D is much better than anterior cross. So the correct answer is D, but A is also correct. 
so this is a bit of theory about prim lock it's consists of upper and lower plate having occlusally inclined bright planes in this question is also asked these bright planes interlock at 45 degree angle and they are trimmed in the lower molar region premolar region upper premolar region to encourage their eruption of the lower premolars and establish their occlusion it can also come as an image which question as well to identify the type of planes which of these is not a cephalometric analysis it's a easy question all of you know tweeds is an as cephalometric downs also is a cephalometric analysis grammans is a pa or posterior anterior cephalometric analysis so let's remain with the bolton analysis bolton analysis is a model analysis in which we try to estimate the proportion of the tooth both anterior and posterior as a tooth. so answer is bolton analysis again a theoretical question normal range of fma angle is simple answer is 15 to 25 degrees it was tweed who gave this the average range is 15 to 25 degrees another theory, uh, which other questions can be asked in the normal incisor mandible plane angle is 90 degree frank aap in dono ka sum karke 180 se minus kijiye the you can get the fmi is 65 degree this is based on a tweed cephalometric analysis or tweed triangle next question second order bends are also called as in out bends stock bends toe in bend and anchorage bend i'll try to uh, answer this question with the help of an image uh, rather the image was although not given in the question so these are the second order bends these are the first order bends there are three types of bends in the wire which we place first order second order and third order bend so what are first order bends first order bends are the in out bends just remember this figure this question has also come as a figure that what type of bends are present in this image so it's a first order bend so what are the first order bends these are used these are also called as in out bends and used in the correction of the buccolingual or rhabdolingual labiolingual and rotational tooth movements next is the second order bends all also known as the tip back bends they are made of in vertical plane and used in the anchorage preparation or for uprighting of the teeth and used in the paling of the roots and elevation or depressing certain teeth and what are third order bend third order bends are torquing bends they are used in to torque the roots so a image of third order bends i have not prepared here but nevertheless it can also come so coming back to the question and second order bends are also known as in out bends no that's a first order bend torquing bends that's a third order bend toin bends is also first order bend this is a toin bend this region present in the molar region to toe in the molar anchorage bend is the correct term second order bends or also known as tip back bends another theoretical question supraversion of upper anterior along with labially inclined alveolar ridge what will be seen the correct answer is deep bite supraversion means extrusion of the upper incisors and along with labially inclined alveolar ridge so the correct answer is deep bite clear cut hai agar upper anterior supra erupted hai to it will cause deep bite only it cannot cause open bite scissor bite is mostly seen in the posterior region the term is mostly related to the molar region and cross bite is seen in both anterior posterior scissor bite is also seen but the term is mostly related to the posterior region cross bite may of course no supra eruption of the anterior of course the option even by rule of elimination comes by deep bite only next question if teeth are more upright than usual it indicates the option is open bite again agar uh, previous question se jaye there it was supra eruption here the teeth are more upright it's a way of uh, compensation by nature that whenever there is open bite means the anterior teeth are not able to meet the teeth usually become more upright and causes and the uh, in open bite cases it cannot open in cross bite and inclination cannot be the answer or deep bite so it's a direct question picked direct line picked from uh, the uh, gukiritsa's book so internal features are mild crowding in upper right incisors gingival hypertrophy these are the features of anterior open bite maxillary occlusion and parietal plane tilted upwards and mandible occlusion plane canted downwards next question a patient with square gonial angle square face and square arch will have now these are all the feature the question is clearly indicated 
of also asking about telling about all the clinical features of class 2 div 2 patient that is a square gonial angle square face and square arch so another question which can come is what are the features of class 2 div 2 these are all three are the features of class 2 div rest jo bhi option hoga that is not a feature of class 2 div high mandible plane angle increase inclination angle increase facial height decrease facial height so the correct answer is decrease facial height high mandible plane angle will lead to a vertical growth pattern and cause increased facial height so a or c are related to each other inclination angle is related to the palatal plane it tells about the inclination of the palatal plane with respect to the cranial base so it's not present in class 2 div 2 patient so the correct answer is decrease facial height basic function of mini implant is please mind that the word here is mini implant it's not a prosthetic implant it's a mini implant mini implants are used in orthodontic books so basic function is primary stability type of anchorage type of material use osseo integration mini implants or the orthodontic implants or temporary anchorage device or tads other words which can be used are never osseo integrated they are used for the purpose of treatment and are taken out osseo integration is the word only used for prosthetic implant had the word mini mini word not been written the might the option might have osseo integration might have been correct but mini is written or osseo integration is not used type of material use <coughs> seldom comes into play in the use of tads or mini implants because there is a made of iron only they are used for the purpose of insertion and removed at a time so material use in primary stability and type of anchorage many impl uh, implants also has a primary and secondary stability as part of its thing but it's not its function the function is its use in anchorage <coughs> excuse me so the basic function of mini implant is it's a type of anchorage more refined would be type of skeletal anchorage so the function is anchorage primary and secondary stability are required for mini implant to function as a method of anchorage so this is a image also a image based question has gone also come certain points about mini implants their diameter is generally 0.9 to 1.6 mm diameter is always at the head of the implant not at the base head head is the one which projects outside the oral cavity which is seen its length is generally 6 to 12 mm it has the head has a hole or groove to accept the orthodontic band sometimes the head is also shaped like a bracket they can be there are two types self tapping and self drilling here if you can see this cross cut groove is a self drilling type that it removes the bone as we insert it into the bone so it's a self drilling type of a meaning skeletal anchorage device or mini implant so this is a image it can also come as a image based question just a minute let me see the time In coming to the next question which time we have many questions to come what type of ortho force is generated by removable functional appliances orthopedic force intermittent force continuous force interrupted force first of all it's a removable functional appliances or it cannot generate an orthopedic force less options are intermittent continuous or interrupted force it's a removable appliance so again it cannot generate a continuous force so we are left with intermittent and interrupted force the correct answer is intermittent force please be careful it's the line is very careful clearly written in the profits book the sixth edition that removable all the removable functional appliances removable functional removable orthodontic appliances all the elastics have deliver intermittent force that is they deliver the force till the time patient wears is and whenever he removes either for eating or chewing or anything the force drops to zero so all the removable functional appliances delivers a intermittent force so the correct answer is option b again a uh, assertion uh, it's a one more statement which is written is that a removable func all the inter removable functional appliances also deliver interrupted force might so the correct word was written was might also deliver interrupted force 
सो जस्ट टू क्लियर इट कि वाई दिस लाइन इज रिटर्न इज बेसिकली होता क्या है वेन एवर पेशेंट वेयर आर रिमूव अप एनी फंक्शनल अप्लाइंस एनी ऑर्थोरटिक अप्लाइंस विच इज रिमूव द फोर्स लेवल ड्रॉप्स टू जीरो बिटवीन द नेक्स्ट एक्टिवेशन सो इफ द पेशेंट कंटिन्यूज टू वेयर इट एंड ही डज नॉट विदड्रॉ इट फ्रॉम माउथ इट विल डिलीवर एन इंटरप्टेड फोर्स दैट इज द फोर्स रिक्लाइंस टू जीरो द टूथ मूव्स टू इट्स द अप्लाइंस डज इट फंक्शन एंड द टूथ मूव्स टू इट्स ओरिजिनल फंक्शन but if the patient removes it which is 100% occurs by the either by eating or the it delivers intermittent force so an assertion reasoning type of question can also be framed on this that whether uh, an assertion can be that a removal function the appliance can deliver intermittent as well as interrupted force this is a line written in profit only that's why i'm highlighting it here can deliver can is the word can deliver intermittent as well as interrupted force but just to be clear if there is it comes as a multiple answer correction choice option correction uh, the answer will be intermittent force not interrupted but might be possible to come as a assertion reasoning type of question in which they frame a statement so it can also deliver a interrupted force as well so these are the graphs this i have picked up from profit only this first graph is of a continuous force in which the force declines the doctor uh, dentist activates it and the force declines the ideal appliance should deliver a continuous force but in orthodontics there is no such thing as an ideal appliance this is ideal spring the graph of an ideal appliance so it might be called that which of the following graphs represents of an ideal appliance so it's this first graph the second graph is interrupted force the force developed declines to zero again the dent orthodontist activated and with time declines to an intermittent appliance the force never never drops to zero because the patient removes it removal appliance elastics are all example of intermittent force the force level never drops to zero patient removes it again wears it the patient the appliance is reactivated it never drops to zero so the graph is never down to zero it stops in between so all removal appliance deliver intermittent force all fixed appliances mind it deliver an interrupted force the force level drops to zero the orthodontist changes the wire and again the force level so fixed appliance delivers a interrupted force removal appliance delivers a intermittent force and an ideal appliance should deliver a continuous force so these are other questions which can be framed on based on the similar concept coming to the next question line joining pogonion to subnasal or to nasal is called z line s line r line e line we'll call clear all of these concept here and only first of all r line i also mentioned in the beginning only r there is nothing called as r line this r point r which is used in the broadband cephalometric resistance point so with that leaves us with z line s line and e line so we'll do that one by one what is s line so s line is drawn from the soft tissue first of all these are all soft tissue lines these are not hard tissue landmarks these are soft tissue lines S line or the Steiner's line, which is drawn from soft tissue pogonion to the midpoint of the S shape curve between the subnasal and the nasal tip. So, it drawn from the soft tissue pogonion to the S shape curve between the subnasal and the nasal tip. Subnasal is the junction of the nose. अगर मैं ऐसे if I draw this, this is the upper lip. ये nose tip है, ये upper lip है, ये तो ये सब नेजेल वुड बी द पॉइंट हेयर ओनली एंड नो नेजियन विल बी हेयर सो दिस लाइन इज डॉन फ्रॉम एंड दिस इज द चिन टिप सॉफ्ट टिश्यू पोगोनियन से एंड इंटरसेक्शन बिटवीन दिस लाइन इट बी द एस लाइन नेक्स्ट इज द जेड लाइन इट इज डॉन टेंजेंट टू द सॉफ्ट टिश्यू चिन एंड टू द मोस्ट एंटीरियर पॉइंट ऑफ इधर अपर और लोअर लिप विच एवर इज प्रोक्लाइन मोज एक्सटेंडिंग टू द फ्रैंकवर्ट हॉर्जोंटल प्लेन इधर वर्ड का ध्यान रखना है मोस्ट एंटीरियर पॉइंट ऑफ इधर अपर एंड लोअर लिप और लोअर लिप जेड लाइन जेड लाइन इज ऑल्सो मेरी इट वॉज गिवन बाई मेरी फील्ड सो इट वॉज कॉल ऑल्सो कॉल एज मेरी फील्ड जेड लाइन और मेरी फील्ड लाइन और दे कैन ऑल्सो जस्ट गिवन इज जेड लाइन विच इज द ऑप्शन मैंशन हेयर सो जेड लाइन इज द मोस्ट पॉसिंग फ्रॉम द सॉफ्ट इशू चिन अगेन फ्रॉम द सॉफ्ट इशू चिन और सॉफ्ट इशू पोगोनियन विच एवर वर्ड दे कैन यूज टू द मोस्ट एंटीरियर पॉइंट ऑफ इधर अपर और लोअर लिप any lip which is the most proclined one it passes through that and intersects with the frankfurt horizontal plane and the average angle is 75 to 85 degree 
ई लाइन और रिकेट्स एस्थेटिक लाइन और ई लाइन इज टिप ऑफ द नोज से लेकर सॉफ्ट टिश्यू चिन तक एंड एच लाइन इज टेंजन टू द चिन एंड अपर लिप जेड लाइन और एच लाइन में ध्यान रखना है कि जेड लाइन मोस्ट प्रोक्लाइन लिप से पास होती है और एच लाइन टेंजन टू द अपर लिप हमेशा चाहे लोअर लिप प्रोक्लाइन हो चाहे कोई भी प्रोक्लाइन हो इट वॉज इज थ्रू द अपर लिप ओनली जेड लाइन पास इज थ्रू द मोस्ट टेंजन और मोस्ट एंटीरियर पॉइंट सो जेड लाइन इज पासिंग थ्रू मोस्ट एंटीरियर पॉइंट ऑफ अपर और लोअर लिप एच लाइन इज टेंजन टू द चेन एंड अपर सो सिंस एस लाइन पे क्वेश्चन आ चुका है एंड दे प्रोवाइड ऑप्शन है जेड एंड ई लाइन सो दे माइट बी पॉसिबल दैट दे कैन पुट क्वेश्चन ऑन एस जेड ई और एच लाइन एनी ऑफ दैम दे कैन पुट अप इन द फ्यूचर एग्जामिनेशन एज वेल सो ई लाइन वॉज गिवन बाई रेकेट्स एस लाइन वॉज गिवन बाई स्टीनर जेड लाइन वॉज गिवन बाई मेरी फील्ड सो इट कैन बी ऑल्सो मेरी फील्ड जेड लाइन एंड आई हैव समराइज ऑल ऑफ दैम सो हेयर द करेक्ट आंसर इज बी नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन मूवमेंट इन विच फोर्स एक्ट्स ऑन फुल पी डी एफ एंड पी डी एल स्पेस नॉट ऑन अ पॉइंट सो करेक्ट आंसर इज बॉडीली मूवमेंट टॉर्किंग टिपिंग फोर ऑल ऑफ इट द फोर्स एक्ट्स ऑन वन पॉइंट टिपिंग ऑकर्स ऑन द रूट टिप और बिटवीन दैट टॉर्किंग द फोर्स एक्ट्स ऑन द क्राउन इन विच द रूट मूवमेंट्स ऑकर टिपिंग द फोर्स अगेन द रूट मूवमेंट्स ऑकर बट द फोर्स एक्ट्स कैन एक्ट फ्रॉम द क्राउन टिप to anywhere between rotation two points forces occur on beach both on the opposite side to cause rotation bodily movement is the only one in which the force acts on the full pdl space to call full car translation occurred the correct answer is b another another thing which is to be remembered is that few translatory movements are seen during orthotic extrusion or intrusion so they can also put provide your question in, in movements in which all फोर्स एक्शन ऑन ऑल फुल पी डेल स्पेस एंड नॉट ऑन अ पॉइंट एंड दे कैन मैंशन ऑप्शन एज एक्सट्रूजन और इंट्रूजन दैट इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट बॉडीली मूवमेंट इज सीन बोथ ऑफ दैम द होल टूथ इंट्रूज द होल टूथ एक्सट्रूज द फोर्स एक्ट्स ऑन द फुल पी डी एफ स्पेस देन ओनली देन कैन ऑफ दैम नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन ट्रीटमेंट फॉर पेशेंट विद क्लास टू स्केल क्लास टू ओपन बाइट लॉन्ग फेस शुड बी डन इज इसमें कहीं भी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लिखा नहीं है कि इट्स अ ग्रोइंग और अ नॉन ग्रोइंग पेशेंट बट द ऑप्शन आर ऑफ फंक्शनल अप्लाइंस और हाई सो रिज्यूम दैट द पेशेंट इज ग्रोइंग हैड द पेशेंट एंड सर्जिकल ऑप्शन वुड हैव बीन गिवन द क्वेश्चन वुड हैव बीन अ बिट कन्फ्यूज एंड सिंस दे हैव गिवन ऑल द फंक्शनल ऑप्शन विद द फंक्शनल अप्लाइंस सो द करेक्ट आंसर वुड बी फंक्शनल अप्लाइंस विद हाई पोल हेड केयर वाई बोथ फंक्शनल अप्लाइंस फॉर इज यूज टू करेक्ट दिस स्केलेटल क्लास टू Head gear is used to correct this open bite along with long face because it causes the down clockwise rotation. The head gear will be given high pull head gear will be given and causing a clockwise rotation of the parotid place for correcting the open bite. And at the same time, the head gear will also cause restraint in the growth. So it will correct in the open bite as well. And class two correction will be done with the functional appliance. Coming to the next question, a patient has anterior crowding due to large size of her teeth as compared to the base of the mandible, causing crowding, which is genetically transmitted. Such crowding is called as. ये Dr. Shridhar Prem Kumar sir की book में से उठाया है primary, secondary, tertiary crowding. यहाँ answer is since the word genetic is written, the answer is primary crowding. So what are secondary and tertiary crowding? So we'll discuss that as well. Secondary crowding is acquired crowding due to loss of arch length due to environmental causes. अगर याद करना फर्स्ट इज जेनेटिक सेकंड इज एनवायरमेंटल कॉज टर्सरी इज आल्सो कॉल्ड एज लेट इनसाइजर क्राउडिंग ड्यू टू लेट मैंडेबल ग्रोथ मोस्टली सीन इन क्लास थ्री पेशेंट्स ड्यू टू लेट ग्रोथ इट कैन कॉज टर्सरी क्राउड सो प्राइमरी क्राउडिंग पे सिंस इज द क्वेश्चन हैज कम सो सेकेंडरी एंड टर्सरी पे इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी इन फ्यूचर कैन कॉम्प्लेक्स क्राउडिंग करके कुछ नहीं होता सो आंसर इज ई अगेन क्वेश्चन लाइन डायरेक्टली प्रिक्ट अप फ्रॉम प्रॉफिट नेजल बोन ग्रोथ इज कम्प्लीट एट वॉथ क्रेज ये सिंपल थियोरिटिकल क्वेश्चन है टेन ईयर्स इसका जो मॉडिफिकेशन आ सकता है कि नेजल बोन ग्रोथ कम्प्लीट स्टॉप्स एट टेन ईयर्स ऑफ एज बट स्टिल द नोज ग्रोज सो नेजल कार्टिलेज एंड द फर्दर ग्रोथ आफ्टर टेन ईयर्स ऑकर्स बाय द ग्रोथ ऑफ नेजल कार्टिलेज एंड सॉफ्ट टिश्यू बट द बोन ग्रोथ स्टॉप्स एट टेन ईयर्स There is no further growth of the bone after ten years. There is growth of soft tissue or cartilage only. So it completes at ten years of age. Growth of further growth is occurs after of only cartilage and soft tissue. 
since I'm overshooting time, I'll bit do quickly. Which of these is an inactive growth site in mandible? Condyle, coronoid, posterior ramus, or chin? Answer is chin. As you all know, condyle is a growth site. Coronoid is also a growth site. Posterior ramus is also a growth site. If you would have seen the experiments in which the much stuff said in the class, in which a nail was implanted in the anterior ramus and it came out loose in the rat. There is resorption on the anterior border of the ramus and deposition on the posterior border. Similarly, condylar growth, the growth of the condylar growth has taken advantage in the functional appliance that treatment and similarly coronoid growth. Chin is an inactive site. The, all the growth occurs above the chin and below the chin. So again, I can say that pogonion, if they might have written the point pogonion, pogonion also does not grow. All the growth occurs above it or below it. Chin does not grow. So it might be possible that you see where the chin becomes prominent because there is in resorption above it and grow, deposition of bone below it. This point does not grow. It's the most inactive site. And it's also used, that's why it's used for the superimposition technique. So another question, modification can come and which of the following can be used for mandibular superimposition? The answer would be chin only. All of these continue to grow. Representation of orthodontic arch form mathematically is done by alpha, beta, gamma, catenary curve. The answer is catenary curve. What is catenary curve? Basically, when you ha hang a chain from a wire, the chain hangs down. So that's the simple arch form which it takes is a catenary curve. So an, aesthetic, uh, an excellent mathematical description of a natural dental arch form is provided by the catenary curve in which the shape of that a loop of a chain would take if it was suspended from two hooks. Next is projection from point A and point B to occlusion pain is used in Agar aap look pata hai, this is a direct answer is width appraisal. Downs analysis is not used. Cheeners, Grammans, Grammans is also again a PA analysis. The option came in the previous question as well. Width analysis. This modification they might have asked in previous question is width analysis is given by it's not, not given by width. It was given in University of Witwater Stand. So that's why the name Wits came. This university is located in Johannesburg. So all of these questions have come in the previous exam. So that's why I'm taking. So on the occlusion plane, the points of contact A, A and B are labeled as A, O and B. If point A is ahead, then it's class 2. If point A is behind point B, then it's class 3. Next question. Movement and growth of one bone due to pressure exerted by growth of adjacent bone is termed as the correct answer is D. Secondary displacement. So, what are the options? We will discuss it. The question is the movement and growth of one bone. Due to one bone growth, the other bone is moved from the pressure. That is secondary displacement. Remodeling is that what we see in condyle ramus. That is, there is deposition and resorption on one side. Due to remodeling of bone, drift of the bone occurs. That is, the bone shifts from one location. Apparently, it looks like the bone has drifted. But actually the bone has not drifted, it is at the same place, but due to selective deposition and resorption at the place uh, of the site, it appears that the bone has moved, but actually it has not. So remodeling and drift are related. Due to remodeling, drift occurs. And primary displacement is due to the inherent movement and growth of the bone. It's not because of growth of the bone of adjacent. So of the same bone, that's primary displacement. And if the effect is on the another bone, it causes secondary displacement of the bone. The correct answer is D. So mandible acts as a, this is a question from the functional matrix theory, capsular matrix, periosteal matrix, macroskeleton unit and microskeleton unit. So first of all, if you don't know anything, it's simple that mandible is a skeletal tissue, so macro or micro will be the option. A macro skeletal is the correct answer. Micro, what will be in the micro? Had the question with any condyle, coronoid, Ramus they have given then it would mean micro because it mandible is made up of many small parts basically it's the same bone so don't get confused but moss considered it to be made of many different parts that is ramus and all so he assembled these as a microskeleton units and assembled them as a mandible so macro is mandible had they mentioned as any other part or any structure of the bone then it would mean macro so correct answer is c macroskeleton
another an question from temp functional matrix theory temporalis muscle on the coronoid process acts as again if the option cannot be c and d it's not a skeletal tissue option has to be a or b and opting on the coronoid process so it's a periosteal matrix again a functional matrix theory what happens what uh, what moss imagined was that the growth of uh, any structure occurs basically because of the growth of what he said was the growth of the bones occurs because of the growth of the surrounding structure so as the structure capsule enlarges it causes the growth of the internal structure or similarly vice versa or the internal structure enlargement causes the growth so the action of the temporalis muscle on the coronoid process like in chewing it causes the growth of the coronoid process that's what moss said so coronoid process uh, that will cause a periosteal matrix and coronoid being a microskeletal unit so periosteal matrix in influences the macroskeletal unit and capsulin matrix influences the macroskeletal unit again question or uh, image based question which came in 2018 according to the new jackson stride what does the outer green ring of the picture mean options are daily ohql positive self esteem structural madness of course uh, the ohql is the correct option because it's seen but in the answer uh, exam this was not given oral health related quality of life this is a later point which was add, added to the triad of jackson that basically the all the orthodontic treatment is related to should influence and should affect improve the oral health of the patient so it the objective of any orthodontic treatment according to jackson triad are structural balance functional efficiency and aesthetic harmony the original triad ne kuch bhi or uh, quality of life or oral health ke bare mein baat nahi ki thi so the fourth part which was added which encircled all this triad was the oral health quality of life now the last question identify the instruments given in the picture below it's a bracket holding tweezer i mentioned in the image of first previous question as well in which the distal end cutter was seen सो ये इमेज बेस क्वेश्चन काफ़ी आ रहे हैं विव ऑफ डिफरेंट इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स अगर सिंपली आप इसको देखेंगे तो ब्रैक पॉइंटेड टिप है इट्स लाइक अ ट्वीजर सो नॉर्मल स्मॉल थिंग्स को होल्ड करने के लिए इट्स लाइक पैकेट होल्डर ब्रैकेट पोजिशनिंग गेज विल हैव अ मेजरमेंट्स रिटर्न ऑन इट बर्ड बिग प्लायर विल बी हैव अ टिप पॉइंटेड टिप ऑन इट्स एंड एंड डिस्टिल एंड कटर फोटो यू हैव ऑलरेडी सीन सो इट्स सिंपल अ ब्रैकेट होल्डर सो दैट्स ऑल for the evening uh, thank you and all the best for your exam